Hello, my sweet YouTubers. Today, we are gonna be talking about string methods. Now, you can see I have this beautiful string here. My oh my, chicken pot pie. It was the first thing I thought of, honestly. I don't even know why I thought of it, because I literally hate chicken pot pies. Like, I think they're the most disgusting food in the world. And with that, I would like to introduce my sponsor, Banquet Chicken Pot Pies. Giving people nearly a half a day's worth of sodium in only one serving since 1953. No, I'm totally kidding. Guys, it's only 39%. That's not even nearly half. No, honestly, I'm not sponsored by Chicken Pot Pies. I think they're gross. <laughs> but you know what's not gross? Getting a job, right? And in order to get a job, you have to have good interview skills. Interviewing is a whole different skill than programming. You might be a boss at programming here and you can like make algorithms and junk, but you're not gonna really know if you're that good until you're put to the test with a mock interview, which you can do that with Pramp. By signing up for Pramp, you're gonna get questions on data structures and algorithms, and you're gonna be rated by other people on how you do on your interviews. Pramp is the real deal if you really wanna take your programming to the next level. Check them out, guys. I'll leave a link in the description. The first two methods we're gonna talk about are kinda stupid, but I'm gonna teach them to you anyways. <laughs> okay, I guess the first one's kind of important, and that is char at. Now this is where you pass an index and it's going to give you that character. We talked about this briefly in the previous video, so if you are watching the series from the beginning, you probably already know how this works. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to get the first character and it's gonna be an M. And we can put in a different index here. And now we get H. Now spaces are considered characters, so if we're gonna get the 10th index, it's gonna be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is H. If you wanted to get the last character, you could actually go in here and get X dot length minus one. And you wanna make sure you have that minus one because the length is always going to be one larger than the last index because the indexes start at zero. So run it and we get E, which in fact is correct. Now this next method is kind of stupid, but we're, <laughs> we're still gonna learn it. All right, so this one's concat where you can actually add a string in here, such as now with 20% more chicken. And this is going to return a new string. So we actually need to output the result of this. There we go, there's our entire string. If we wanted, we could assign this to a new string. So we could say the full add is this. So this method might be useful for you, but more than likely you can just use the plus operator. So for example, we could say x plus this string right here. So I'm not really sure what the use case of that method is there, but it's good to know that it exists because you might see it in code and you should know how it works. So we can sys out this new full add and it should be the same exact thing. Yes. Now moving on to some more useful methods. The first we have is contains. So we could say full add dot contains. It'll return true or false depending on whether the string contains whatever we pass in here. So for example, we could say chicken. And now let's sys out this. And you can see the result is true. So that is a very simple method for a binary yes or no. If you're looking for something a little bit more complex, there is a method you could use. That method is the index of method, and that's going to actually tell us where it was found in the string. So we're gonna go through another example. Let's say full add dot index of. And if you look at the options here, we could pass in a character, but we can also pass in a string. So we can call this method and pass in my, for example. And my is the first thing in the string, so it should return back zero. I think I had one too many parentheses there. Let's run it. And we get the value zero. Now this method actually has another option. This is known as an overloaded function because there's more than one possible way to call it. So we can pass in another argument, which is the index to start at. So for example, I could put in three. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna count zero, one, two, three, and it's gonna start right here. So the value should return for what? Oh, <laughs> bologna sandwich. So it's going to count zero, one, two, three, and it's gonna start right here. And my should be index four, five, six. So the value it returns should be six. And we get six, awesome. Now here's a trick for you guys. If you wanna skip the first occurrence, but you don't know what index it's at, you can do that dynamically. So for example, let's just say, yum. Now, just we're just putting that there just so it doesn't start at zero. It makes it a little bit more fun. All right, so now what we can do is the second argument here, we can pass in another call to index of. So we could say full add dot index of, and the, the value we're gonna pass in is the same thing, my, but then we're going to, outside of the function call, add one to that. 
So basically it's going to find my, it's gonna hit it, and then it's going to add one and it's gonna start the search right here. So it's gonna skip that first occurrence. We run it and we get 15. There might be 400 mys in here, so I'm not really sure how to scale this to grabbing like <laughs> the 39th, for example. There is something you could do to grab the last occurrence of my, and that's actually its own method. So we can go over here and try that out. So we could say full add dot last index of, and same thing, we could be searching for a character or a string, and we can optionally pass in a from index. So if we look at this one, it'll search backwards starting at the specified index. But let's just first grab the last occurrence. What are we looking for? We're looking for my, run this, got an error, had a little typo in the method name, run this and we get the value 15, which is correct because the first one we skip and then we found this one earlier, which is 15. It's also the last occurrence of my in the string. Similarly, you could pass in another argument if you wanted to skip the last one and get the second to last one and so forth. So those are some basic string methods. I, I'm gonna get going because I really gotta go eat some chicken pot pie now. I am starving. <laughs> so thank you guys. Please be sure to check out the description for links to this, the Java Crash Course, the blogs, and the sponsor. And if you're enjoying the series, please consider subscribing as that definitely helps out my channel. All right, peace.